The new M3 lineup is a little bit confusing, especially the M3 Pro, which is the subject of today's video. Yesterday, we primarily focused on the base model M3 MacBook Pro, and I think it's holding up pretty well, but today we're gonna get a little bit more in depth, and I've brought in the M2 Pro MacBook Pro for comparison. So we have a little bit of a four-way test here, M2 versus M3, M2 Pro versus M3 Pro. And straight away, this isn't a simple comparison because the M2 to the M3 have the same core configuration. Eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, nice and easy. Not the case for the M3 Pro, which has the same 12 core CPU, except that that's six efficiency, six performance, instead of four efficiency, eight performance. So there are faster cores, but there's less performance cores. So what, what does that mean? Same thing with the GPU. There's 18 cores that should be faster than the 19 in the M2 Pro. It's very strange. So we're gonna need this four-way shootout to really understand how these things are performing. And I still haven't tested the M3 Max. So yeah, there's a lot to get through here. I'm gonna be adding more benchmarks in the later tests, but for right now, Let's jump into the comparison with these four machines, starting, of course, with Cinebench, nice and easy. So as we saw in yesterday's video, the M3 compared to the M2 is a pretty impressive jump. However, the same cannot be said for the M3 Pro. Because we're down two performance cores, it doesn't really matter that they're faster, the score is basically the same. And I noticed the same thing over in Blender. When running the CPU test, it took five minutes and 44 seconds on the M2 Pro versus five minutes and 34 seconds on the M3 Pro. That's only a 10 second gain. You're, you're never going to notice something like that. But things do get a little bit more interesting when we move over to the GPU. I spent a lot of time testing here because the results were fairly inconsistent depending on the program. In something simple like 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme, our results are very logical. We jump up 7 FPS from M2 to M3, and we jump up 10 FPS from M2 Pro to M3 Pro. This reflects, this reflects the engine being able to take advantage of those faster cores. However, it doesn't reflect ray tracing, which the M3 series has. So let's go back over to Blender to see what that does. If we run the standard Blender Classroom GPU test with Metal enabled on all of these computers, you'll find that the M2 to the M3 is a pretty significant gain, but the M2 Pro to the M3 Pro does make a fairly noticeable difference. However, Blender has an experimental Metal RT setting that allows you to take advantage of that hardware ray tracing. So when you enable that, you'll notice that we're shaving off about 20 seconds on the regular M3 chip, and a little bit more than 10 seconds on the M3 Pro. Those are honestly some pretty impressive gains, especially considering that this is an experimental feature, but what really caught my attention is that the M3 GPU with Metal RT turned on is actually faster than the M2 Pro. So in just 10 months, Apple has their base level chip beating the Pro level chip. That's pretty cool. However, it's kind of hard at the moment to find games and applications that take advantage of that hardware ray tracing. So if you launch something like GFX Bench, you'll notice, again, pretty similar results to 3D Mark. We have a gain of just two FPS going from M2 to M3, and we have a gain of six going from M2 Pro to M3 Pro. The scaling here seems mainly dependent on the number of cores rather than the speed of said cores. And in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a game that runs in Rosetta, but very well on Apple Silicon, we had even stranger results. Here, the M3 Pro actually scored worse than the M2 Pro. Why, you ask? I don't know, but it's weird, right? And if you do find a game that's very well optimized, like for example, Resident Evil Village, what I found was the M3 Pro is allowing the system to use a little bit more VRAM, probably because of that special new caching feature and the fact that this configuration has 18 gigabytes of unified memory instead of 16, but the FPS and the visuals really don't look any different. At the moment, it comes down to you have a game that's very well optimized, in which case you don't really notice a difference because it runs so well on everything or you have a game that's not well optimized, in which case it's not really a very valid comparison. 
So we're definitely gonna need to revisit the topic of gaming. I need to spend a couple of days, honestly, just going through on both of these machines, finding a bunch of games, settings, setting up crossover, whole bunch of stuff like that to really put them through their paces. So we'll definitely come back to that later, but when we look at these results as a whole, it's not looking too hot for the M3 Pro. And that stays true in Final Cut, which is a great way to test the CPU, the GPU, the codecs all working together. Well, here we saw, again, massive gains going from M2 to M3. That's seriously impressive, but from M2 Pro to M3 Pro, what the heck is going on here? The M3 Pro was slower. And again, we're on day two of the release here, so maybe optimization needs to happen. But even if these machines were tied, or the M3 Pro was 13 seconds faster instead of the other way around, I, I really don't think that's a noticeable difference. Unless you had them side by side, wouldn't mean anything. So the only conclusion that I can really draw here is that Apple is intentionally preventing the M3 Pro chip from getting faster. Why else would they reduce the number of CPU performance cores? Why else would they reduce the number of GPU cores when the M3 Max is increasing? It seems like Apple wants this performance threshold to stay about the same. But that might leave you wondering, what about battery life? You know, reducing the number of performance cores definitely didn't help this thing in terms of performance, but there are less performance cores. It should be more efficient now. The batteries in these two machines are the same, even though we found out yesterday that the M3 14 inch has a slightly smaller battery than the M3 Pro. So I think what we need is a giant four-way battery comparison. How do all of these machines stack up against each other? So my first battery test was a high performance load, nearly two hours of benchmarks. We did Cinebench, then GFX Bench twice. That's a really long one. Then we did Cinebench again, and we finished it off with a Blender CPU render. And the results are in for our four-way performance test here. This, I think, is super interesting because the results weren't exactly what I was expecting. Let's go through them. All right, so first of all, how did the M2 compare to the M3? Well, we are sitting at 52% on the M2 and 55% on the M3. And I should mention when I checked in a little while ago, they were basically neck and neck. So these computers are extremely similar in terms of their battery life, which is interesting because this guy has a larger battery, but also more performance. So it almost seems like Apple is intentionally equalizing these machines so they'll have the same battery life. Now, as for the two back there, this got pretty interesting because the M2 Pro, this is, we're at 20% here. This thing is not gonna last a whole lot longer. But the M3, the M3 Pro is at 43%. That is a significant difference here. Now that's super interesting because as we've seen with the performance benchmarks, the M3 Pro is a total dud, right? There's like no performance gains whatsoever. But the battery, that's where it's at. And it seems like Apple has chosen to keep the performance the same for these chips when going into this new three nanometer architecture, but by reducing the number of performance cores and increasing efficiency, we're getting better battery life. So those are some pretty interesting results. I was not expecting the difference between the M2 Pro and the M3 Pro to be that dramatic, but it seems like what Apple did here was take the performance gains on the M3 and take the efficiency gains on the M3 Pro. But I wanted to do a longer test. That was a performance heavy test. So overnight last night, I left these guys running with a 4K YouTube video just, just blasted for like 12 hours. Okay, so the four way YouTube video test. The M3 Pro is on 8%. The regular M3 is on 12. The M2 Pro is dead and the M2 24%. So, uh, ironically, the old MacBook, the slowest MacBook, did the best. 
Now, since the M2 Pro died in that test, I set up another one in Final Cut Pro. We're just going to export this massive project to see how they compare. And you'll notice the battery rate on the M2 Pro dropping noticeably faster, despite the progress in sharing staying the same. Now, I will say the extra two gigabytes of RAM did seem to make a little bit of a difference. We're barely using any swap memory on the M3 Pro, but we were using nearly half a gig on the M2 Pro. However, after 90 minutes of running this test, we were sitting at 72% on the M2 Pro compared to 82% on the M3 Pro. That's definitely a tangible difference. So again, an interesting result, and it's clear to see that the M3 Pro is more efficient than the M2 Pro. But what surprised me was that the same is not true of the M3 versus the M2. The M2 MacBook Pro beat the M3 in both situations, which is a little bit surprising because I know we talked about the M3 taking the performance gain instead of the efficiency gain, but we're also moving from a 13 to a 14 inch device with larger batteries. So I personally would have thought that these things would have been almost exactly neck and neck. And they were very, very close. However, in that long term 12 hour test, I feel like you would notice a difference like that. So the results from this comparison, definitely a little weird. All right, we've got some funny business going on with the batteries between the M2 and the M3. We got some funny business going on with the performance and the GPU over here. A lot of, a lot of question marks, right? But there is one very clear conclusion. If you are cross shopping any of these devices, I would say do not buy the, uh, the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro. I know that's the cheapest one and it's a year and a half old now so you can find these things discounted, but the, the performance difference between the M2 and the new base model M3, it's way bigger than I ever thought it would have been. So I would absolutely pick this over the M2. Now, as for the M3 Pro, I really can't recommend it. I don't think it's a good value. I mean, okay, you get the new space black color, the display, it's a little bit brighter. The SSD is ever so slightly faster. And in the case of Unreal Engine, I played around with it to see how it would differ. And I would say that it was a little bit smoother, but not really that much faster than the M2 Pro. Plus with all of our benchmarks, I mean, I really can't see why you would pick the M3 Pro over just getting a refurbished or a used or some other discount on the M2 Pro. I think that's the better value. So I'm very curious to hear what you guys think about this comparison. I'm personally extremely excited to get my hands on the M3 Max. It just arrived, it's over there. I really wanna put that thing through its paces. And next week when my 16 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro arrives, we're gonna do a 14 v 16 shootout because that was one that I did back in the M1 days and it was actually very interesting. But now with the M3 Max being such a powerful chip, I'm very curious to see if the 14 inch is going to suffer in terms of battery and in terms of cooling compared to the 16. So a lot to look forward to. Definitely let me know what you'd like me to test in the comments below. I'm hoping to get to some more types of benchmarks for the next video. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Leave a like down below and I'll catch you in the next one.